Support for this podcast and the following message come from Gaia.com, the on-demand streaming TV service that helps you achieve your highest potential at your convenience. To get your first month at only 99 cents, visit GAIA.com forward slash My 7 Chakras. My 7 Chakras, episode 218. The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. The living entity in the material world carries its different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas. Thus, he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another. The living entity, thus making another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose, and sense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. The seven chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras, and now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, your friend and the voice behind My 7 Chakras, the show where we explore the secrets of the ancient world to provide you actionable steps to transform your life. So if you're going through a challenging situation, then hold on because you're going to receive just the information you need. But right before we move on, Action Tribe, I have a small gift for you. After doing 215 episodes and more, I've learned one thing. People love the book recommendations that are shared on the show. But I know that many of you don't listen to the show at home, sometimes in your car, in the metro, outdoors, on your way to work. And so it becomes hard to make a list of some of the amazing books shared on the show. And I want to make that journey easier for you. And that's why I've carefully put together a document containing 21 must-read spiritual books that you will need on your journey. And now I'm offering that for you completely free. To download your copy, visit the link that I'm going to share, put down your best email address and then wait for the download link to arrive in your inbox. The link you need is my 7 forward slash reading list. That's my 7 forward slash reading list. So download that document, print it out if you can, and then take action. And with that said, it's now time to bring you our featured guest for today, Stephen Herman. So Steve, are you ready to inspire? I hope so. I'm really happy to be here. I, I think that your show is really fantastic. It's so nice. I mean, I was looking through all the different guests you've had, and I can only imagine how much you must help so many different people all over the world. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. With more than 40 years of study and practice and training more than 10,000 people worldwide, the Reverend Stephen Herman is a world-famous medium with incredible talent. Stephen holds credentials as an ordained minister, certified medium and teacher with the National Spiritualist Association of Churches USA and has taught for the International Spiritualist Federation UK. A featured personality on television and radio worldwide, Stephen's highly detailed mediumship has been documented by the Associated Press and other news media. A former research medium for the University of Virginia, he travels extensively internationally teaching and demonstrating spirit communications and healing. He is based in Auckland, New Zealand. That's where he's joining us uh, from today and holds a BA degree from Hampshire College, Massachusetts. He's the author of the best-selling mediumship mastery, the mechanics of receiving spirit communications, the ultimate guide. So Steve, welcome to our show. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, uh, since you've listened to some of our episodes, you would know that we always begin our show with an inspirational and an uplifting quote. So what quote do you have for us today? You're, you're, you're from India. And we, you know, India is such an awesome place. And I, I'd like to actually just read a few uh, slokas or verses from Bhagavad Gita, which I know you're familiar with. Great. And these, these greatly inspire me. <clears throat> the living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. The living entity in the material world carries its different conceptions of life from one body to another as the air carries aromas. Thus, he takes one kind of body and again quits it to take another. The living entity, thus making another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, 
eye, tongue, nose, and sense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. So <clears throat> this is from uh, Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter 15, 7 to 9. And as a medium, my work involves <clears throat> communicating with people who are in the subtle or the spirit dimension and bringing through messages from them to people in the physical. So what's very nice about Bhagavad Gita and, and th those particular verses is it talks about our eternal nature <clears throat> as a soul. And so many people here in this physical world fear the destruction of the physical body. They're greatly disturbed, greatly hurt when someone close to them passes over. And mediumship, it's all about love. It's all about healing. And it's about connecting people in the spirit world to people here in the physical world and helping not just healing people here physically, but also helping people in the, in, <clears throat> in the spirit world here heal as well. Because certainly, once we do pass over to the world of spirit, we're going to have relationships with people here in the physical. And people who pass over, they, they greatly miss and, and, and greatly want to communicate with people who are here physically. So Bhagavad Gita philosophically really per provides a lot of information about our eternal nature, which I think is really, really, really important. So I always, that's one of the things I try to inspirationally, I try to read as much from the Bhagavad Gita. And it's classic, it's timeless, it's you know 5,000 years old, and it's pretty awesome. Wonderful. Thanks a lot for sharing that with us. It was a beautiful and wonderful quote. Yes. And you're from India. Well, you're, I mean, that's one of the things that's so good about India. I mean, I, I mean you call it like seven chakras. Well, what's chakra mean? It's Sanskrit for wheel, and we all have chakras, don't we? Absolutely. I mean, chakras is one of the most common words in India. Uh, we have what is called an Ashok Chakra as well, who was a king from thousands of years back. And uh, the story goes that he was a king, and he was a very powerful king. And uh, he had a war with another kingdom, Kalinga, and he won the war. But what happened was when he was going through the battlefield, yeah. he noticed that you know so many dead bodies and carcasses and blood strewn everywhere and he really repented even though he was victorious and from that day on he sort of moved from violence to non-violence and he was one of the most powerful proponents of buddhism you know all ar around the world and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but but that's, that's pretty amazing yeah 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 well that's that's the whole thing there's so much there's so much deep philosophy when we talk about chakra you know it wheel but but, you know, we, we, we open up our chakras. So the whole thing with, with mediumship is we're actually utilizing different energy centers or chakras because we have the physical body, but we also have the subtle body, don't we? And that's really what we get into the yogic philosophy. We, we, we learn about the subtle anatomy, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, as, as an individual, as a soul, we're in this dense physical body, but we're also in a subtle body. So at some point, each one of us, what's going to happen? We're going to kick the bucket, aren't we? <laughs> And we're going to still be in the subtle body. So when we're, when we're working with spirit communication, what we're really actually utilizing the senses of our subtle body. And most people, just because they're so conditioned, they're really attached, they're really uh, functioning through their denser physical body. So they're not always, unfortunately, in touch mm -hmm. with these higher dimensional senses. I mean, sometimes someone will have like a near-death experience or they might have some conscious out-of-body experience and when that happens typically it activates the subtle senses they become aware of these senses that's why you have a lot of people you know they, they go let's say they have a, 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 some emergency situation they go out of their body and while they're out of their body they go to the spirit world you know they have experiences this way and when they come back typically they're a lot more in touch with their psychic abilities because of what's taken place what to speak of hopefully on a philosophical or spiritual sense as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. in terms of an awake. Got it. So uh, that's exactly like you put it. You know, I've come across different types of people. In some cases, there are those that consciously want to move towards spiritual uh, evol evolvement or maybe self-realization and they take yeah. steps you know constantly day by day month by month year by year and they see the change and there are some people who might be on the other side of the spectrum don't really believe in anything related to mediumship or spirit but they have this experience like a near-death experience an accident a car crash or whatever it is and suddenly they get hit so hard 
you know, spiritually, that once they come back, they're a different person. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But the thing is, is even if someone, I mean, someone might be, let's say, a complete yes. atheist. They're skeptical of all this stuff. They think it's complete nonsense. It's pseudoscience. Yep. You're completely gullible. You're you're hoodwinking people, and you know you're deluded and leading them astray just by having this podcast, yep. right? And what happens? You know, let's say they're in a car crash, and they literally they leave their physical body permanently. They're they're in for a rude awakening. I mean, it doesn't change the reality that we're spirit souls. So you know, our, our intellectually, our minds, we can come up with so many things and, and be in denial about it. But the reality of it is, you know, even though we have the physical body, we're, we're actually eternal consciousness. So what's good about mediumship is someone who's very um, skeptical yeah. and open mind, they could go to different mediums, they could experiment with it, investigate it. And it's fantastic because their complete um, way of looking at things, their complete consciousness can completely shift through their own experiences. Because someone can read philosophy they can even hear it from people who are really knowledgeable teachers, but they're not necessarily going to accept it or believe it. They're not necessarily going to agree with it. But when you have actually get into experimentation with, with psychic phenomena, certainly we can be deluded by our senses. But if you get into it, what's going to happen is, is you're going to actually have direct firsthand experience. And the spirit world, they will go way out of their way to <clears throat> present things to people to really – open people up, so to speak. And that's something you can't really force on people. I mean, people are in different places, unfortunately, and, you know, they have to learn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for a moment, let's take a couple of steps back and go back to the very beginning. Could you talk to us about your childhood and how it all began for you? Well, the thing with with, with um, mediumship, I mean, every everybody has these abilities. And, and sometimes what happens is, you know, you hear people put mediums upon a pedestal or they're, they're special. Everybody, you know, they're so wonderful and unique, somehow apart from other people. But but we're, we're all spirits. You know, we, we, we all have uh, these types of abilities, the ability to communicate with the spirit world. And, and, and those abilities, they're really not that special within themselves. So certainly when I was small, I was very open to the spirit world. I, I'm, I'm, I was always very sensitive. I'm, I'm very artistically oriented anyway. And with mediumship or these types of abilities – Generally speaking, most mediums, they tend to be artists or they're musicians. You know, they're in touch with the intuitive part of, of their minds compared to, let's say, someone who's an engineer. So when I was little, I was always very artistic and everything. I, was, I wasn't really brought up in any particular religion at all. So I didn't have any type of religious indoctrination, which I think is a good thing because there are certainly some uh, religions that might not or theologically understand these types of things or encourage it. But I, the first time I, I communicated with the spirit world would, would have been when I was two years old. My mom's dad spoke to me and communicated with me. And I had a lot of experiences growing up. <clears throat> when I was little, I learned how to do meditation. And that, that was really, 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 really good because it really got me in touch with myself. And the more I got into it, I just couldn't get away from it. it, it it's something which completely transforms your whole life life and it helps you understand yourself better but it also ultimately helps you to open up your heart a lot more to help other people so you mentioned that when you were two years old you had that first experience what was that experience exactly oh well it was um at night and i went out of my body and i had a conversation uh with my mom's father who, who wanted me to you know say different things to my mom which i did i, I thought i was having a conversation with god <laughs> I really didn't have, you know, the whole concept. But, yeah, it, it, it was pretty neat. You know, it was very vivid, objective, you know, in terms of hearing it, just like I'm talking to you right now and seeing it that way. Got it. So. Got it. And so, okay, so uh, basically what you're saying is that, uh, you know, growing up, you were very sensitive. Uh, you were very open to the spirit world. And because of that, you had these artistic tendencies. You were very intuitive. Uh, and the good part is that you weren't exposed to uh, indoctrination that sometimes happens in the form of different types of religion uh, and the experience that you shared with us uh, today. Did you face any challenges growing up uh, as a kid with these gifts? Of? No, not okay. really. You know, I'm 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 pretty uh, I'm very I'm pretty strong, pretty uh, independent, and everything. And so I think my childhood was pretty happy. And in terms of being open to the spirit world and everything, 
you know, it, it's it's not anything. I don't really look at those types of abilities as, as putting me apart from other people because everybody has these things. Even somebody who's really analytically oriented, ultimately they have the same type of sensitivity that's there. It just has to be cultivated. They have to be aware of it. That's basically it. But I think that everybody, I mean, if you look at like children in a general sense, kids have this ability and it's something that parents should encourage. I've, I've got four kids and I encourage all of them with their abilities. You know, they understand it, which is a cool thing. Oh, it, it helps having a father like you, right? <laughs> who's, you know, uh, who had so many experiences, evidential experiences and someone who teaches people around the world. So I'm sure that this is something that happens in your household as well. And you encourage your kids to have these well, experiences. Well, I, I used to drag them. <laughs> I mean, they've been places like Iceland or whatever, you know, just different places. I mean, I'm, I'm not with their mom anymore, you know, but... I mean, I used to take my whole family around with me, so it would be uh, – now they're too old because they're in school. But it's one of these things where, yeah, they've been, they've been around us since they were babies and before they were babies, <laughs> just in terms of getting here. Yeah. You know, I'll be doing medium stand. They'll be like crawling up to me, that type of thing, while I'm doing it you yeah. know, in front of a lot of people. So Yeah, yeah. Now, as a medium, uh, you've mentioned that you can mentally see, hear, and sense persons in the spirit dimension – so could you describe yeah, this experience yeah, to us? Right. Uh, well, with, with, with mediumship, it's it's a – at least we're talking about mental mediumship now, a mind-to-mind -mind communication. So it's telepathic. It's mind-to-mind. -mind, it's energetic. And it's something which is completely sub, the subjective experience of the medium. Even let's just say if I was working with you and I started describing, let's say, one of your deceased loved ones or guide or something in spirit, I would be the one who would be experiencing that inside my head. So it's subjective. And I could be completely deluded, couldn't I? I mean, I could say that, you know, you've got, you know, Donald Duck with you or something. And I mean, I may be totally like whacked out of my mind. Now, on the other hand, when you're experiencing those things, what actually is happening? And people who haven't necessarily had too many experiences with this don't always have a clue, especially you know, it's like, let's say they start getting into a class or they want to learn about it. And really, it, it, it's, it's something which is totally natural and the way it works basically is the <clears throat> when you work with mediumship, it's something which is completely carefully planned out and orchestrated by higher personalities in the spirit world. So they actually train the medium, they work with the me medium, and the medium learns to raise their own vibration up. So what I've done with the process of mediumship if I'm working is I raise my vibration up and I've allowed my mind to be receptive to receiving mental impressions from the personalities in the spirit world. So what I've learned to do is mentally disassociate or get out of the way. So I'm aware of what's going on, generally speaking. But the information is being mentally transmitted and impressed in my mind. And our psychic senses correspond to our physical senses. So if they, for example, work with me clairvoyantly, I'll see some of the information and I'll see it in my head. Now, what exactly does that <clears> – <throat> what exactly does <clears> – <throat> Is that like when that happens? A lot of times the thoughts that blend into your own head, in some cases, it might not really be too much different from your own thoughts. But with the training part, someone can actually learn to differentiate what's coming in from spirit and what isn't. So generally when, when, when you're attuning to spirit, there's a sense of exhilaration. You feel a energetic connection. It affects your entire nervous system system and you I mean you feel really 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 high and just like uplifted and you can energetically there's temperature changes you can energetically actually feel the subtle energy connecting with you and there's a flow of information which is put in your head now a lot of that can be visual but the the visions that, that are presented which can be literal and symbolic also have an intense feeling to them as well so I mean you might be seeing an image and there's a whole feeling an idea you know, there might be emotions that are connected with it. Similarly, your own body, on a mental level, you're going to feel things in your own body. I mean, for example, you might be bringing someone through from spirit. You're, 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 you might feel that you're much shorter than your regular physical field, and you'll feel like you're missing a leg, literally. It's as if you, you know, part of your right leg's missing from the knee down. And that's because the personality and spirit coming through was shorter than you. He was a male, you know, and he... He was missing part of his leg for whatever reason. I mean, you, you, you'll even start making mannerisms or gestures like the per person. Now, this is not something which is analytical, okay? Even though your analytical mind's kind of out of the way, 
aware of what's going on. It's you've, you've placed yourself in a state of disassociation and you've gotten out of the way and the stuff is actually being placed into your head and you, and you, you won't be able to shut up once you start. I mean, it's just the flow of information. Now you'll mentally smell, taste. You can also mentally hear spirit voices as well. And with, with clear audience, yeah. which is hearing spirit, a lot of times the, the messages will be impressed in your head, just similar to the way images would be impressed in your head, except it'll be auditory. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it, it totally does. And so it, it, it's, it's pretty, I mean, sometimes just the, the idea or what they're trying to get across, it'll be clear cognizance or just that the idea will just be known. You'll just instantaneously say it. So it, 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 it's, it's pretty cool the way it works. Got it. And, you know, you mentioned that there's a technique that allows you to differentiate your thoughts from what is being communicated by spirit and the fact that you shared with us yeah. that you, you feel different, right? You feel uh, way energetic and you're able to well, clearly just, differentiate, so to speak, after, after, after practice, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, a psych, you know, an, an impression from the spirit world, let's say they're, they're giving you some clairvoyant. I mean, that type of image stands out from your own thoughts in a different sure. way. But in the very beginning, people aren't always really sure mm. what's the difference. There's just so much stuff, so much clutter in their own True. head. And I mean, I do a lot of work with training people with mediumship and, you know, it's learning how to meditate, learning how to go into an altered state, you know, that's very safe, very secure, very comfortable for the person. They raise their vibration and they're able to get out of the way and they're just able to start to pay attention of what's in their head. It's like, for example, in some schools of Buddhism, they do a lot of silent meditation, don't they? And they might like, you know, for 10 days, not talk. Right. Whip asana. Just go inside yeah. them. Yeah, things like that. Which, which, you know, as, as a mental discipline are incredible because you, you start doing things mm -hmm. like that. You start to pay attention to what's going on in there. Now, your thoughts are always going to be there to some extent, but you're different than your thoughts and you step out of the way. And so when, when, when your guides in spirit or helpers in spirit put things into your head, you're really going to be able to pay attention to those, okay, this is me and this isn't. And that doesn't happen overnight. Now, sometimes they'll turn up the volume so that, that the person who's the recipient as the medium will really feel the difference. You know, but you, a, lot, a lot of times in the beginning, it's, it's, it's kind of mixed. You know, and someone really isn't able to, they have to learn how to differentiate what's them. And, and, and there is a difference, but it is when someone first, First opens up sometimes it feels like it's their imagination <laughs> so how do they learn i mean they start sharing what they're getting and the person goes my god you described my father to a t <laughs> you know it can be very specific but they'll just think oh this is just my imagination and everything exactly that that was a recurring question that came about in a webinar that i hosted a couple of uh, months back actually oh. with somebody who was an intuitive and uh, people ask the same question is how do i differentiate something that i might be imagining versus uh, spirit communication so thanks a lot uh, for clarifying that yeah. uh, uh, well I, I i teach that all the time because <laughs> i get that same question yeah you know and i i, I you know you, you mentioned you know that you know my, my book you know me Mediumship Mastery, which I have out, which is on Amazon, but, but in that book, it gets into the whole mechanics of the whole entire process of mediumship, and that's a lot of what I do with my training. I work with people individually, plus with groups worldwide, and really, someone can have a lot of blocks, which are pretty normal to have, especially in our society in the modern age, but it's, the right, it's just like artistic ability. You know, someone could be, they might think, oh, I'm a really lousy artist, I can only draw stick figures. If they went to some type of uh, program of study, you know, by people yeah. mentoring them who are experienced professors, teachers, they can, they might, it might take a while depending on the person, but they would actually learn how to, the hand eye coordination to actually draw something representationally that would be pretty good. Mediumship's the same way. I mean, I've had people who are like engineers or they're just really so logically and analytically oriented. And there's ways of breaking that down to get someone past those blocks. You know, not everyone's an artist. Not everyone's necessarily in touch with their sensitivity, but we all have it. So, uh, Steve, are you able to see a person's aura? <clears throat> well, with, with, with the energy field around someone, yeah, sometimes I can see the aura. Sometimes I just feel the aura. I would say I, I would sense it or feel it more than, than see it objectively. Now, the other thing is if I'm tuning into the spirit yeah. world, let's say they're giving me information, a lot of times when they come in, there's an energy field that surrounds them that I'm aware of. 
I mean, sometimes the spirit, the, you know, we talk about what, what does it look like? Well, sometimes it's spirit people when they present themselves, because remember, they have a subtle body. Uh, you'll, you'll see their body kind of transparent. I mean, you'll get a sense that it's a lady in spirit. You'll get a sense of her personality and all that, but it'll be almost like transparent. And, you know, you, you, it, it could be even a little bit blurry or vague in terms of the distinction, you know, the actual features of, of the person coming through. Now, this isn't always the case, but sometimes. But you're really, you can still describe them very explicitly, all the different specifics, just in terms of the way they present themselves. I mean, other times, I mean, they might present themselves just like they would be when they were here, you know, every, every little mole or every little line on their face very vividly that way. But with the energy field that's around them, you really get a sense of uh, what are they like as a person in spirit? Because there's different levels in the spirit world, right? In my father's house, many mansions. So when Jesus said that, he wasn't talking about housing developments. He's talking about different planes of consciousness. Or in, in, in the Vedas, they're called lokas, you know, different different abodes, right, where different types of personalities dwell. So not everyone is necessarily in the same place in spirit. And, and certainly a spirit teacher, their energy field that's around them, it's going to be very different than someone who's a grandmother, typically. Does that make sense? No, it, it, it totally does. And, uh, you know, on your website, I came across that one of the things that you do is auric healing, right? So I wanted to know quickly the difference between auric healing and etheric healing, or are they pretty much the same? Well, the, 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 the energy fields that we have really reflect our physical body. They also reflect the subtle bodies. They're an extension of the subtle body. And you have different layers of the, you know, we, 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 have, we have the self, the soul, then we have the intelligence, we have the all these different the mind all these different subtle coverings and the diseases of the body in so many cases they're directly linked to our emotions to our thoughts and they manifest first on a subtle level that's why you have someone maybe psychically as a medical intuitive or maybe mediumistically as a healer they they have spirit doctors and who can get information you know because the spirit healers who would work through someone let's say they're working with reiki or some type of hands-on spiritual healing, they actually have to diagnose and literally, you know, figure out what's wrong with the, the, the recipient in terms of treatment. And then they channel the energy and do whatever type of um, healing treatments through, through, through the medium or the healer here. But that's all there with an energy field. And that's one of the things about learning to be able to not just see auras, but be able to feel them and sense them, is you can actually use to help people with health types of conditions that way. And pick up on things sometimes before it's actually manifested physically. Got it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, because like you've suggested and you you mentioned as well that you allow the spirit physicians to work through this physical body to perform surgical operations on the etheric body of the patient. Uh, now my question yeah. is, who, you know, who are these spirit physicians and do they change or do you have like a trusted few? Well, you're you're from Bombay, aren't I am. you? You're from Bombay. Okay, when I was in Bombay. <laughs> I made a point of going to Bombay Hospital. Now, this is before it was Mumbai. It was Bombay, yes, yes. Mumbai 25 years yeah. ago. And in Bombay Hospital, I, I actually interviewed him. I hung out with him. And he's a regular, I mean, very, I, I'm not even sure if he's there anymore. He might have already gone to spirit. His name was Dr. Ramakant Kenny. And he authored many books on spiritual healing. He worked full time as a medical doctor in Bombay doing healing work. Okay. I was in his, in his waiting room. So many people coming there in all these afflictions and problems of, with, with their physical bodies that you might not find in, in the States or in Canada or in a, you know, that you might find in India. And he was working with these people, you know, hands-on healing. Now, he had all of, all of his spirit doctors who were working with him. Now, with any type of mediumistic healing, what, I mean, I, I, this, I do the same type of work as him. It's not just something which randomly happens. You have people who work with you. And what did they do? What type of background are they from? You know, when, when they were here in the physical world, they would have worked with some type of healing. So someone like Dr. Kenny, I, I'm not sure if he's still around anymore because he, he'd be in his 90s now. Uh, when he passes over into the spirit world, if he hasn't already, what's he going to be, be doing? I mean, he has so much... Uh, altruism, compassion, desire to help other people, he's going to probably come, you know, and, and be drawn, be attracted to someone who's very sincere, really motivated to help other people and would work through that person. Now, even some physician who 
maybe doesn't understand mediumship, isn't into all this type of stuff, if they're really motivated with really des- with an intense desire to help others, it's not like they give up that desire. You know, they they go to the spirit world and they, they see people suffering here mentally and physically. They're going to want to help those people. And with mediumship, one of the, one of the main in laws is the law of attraction. And what we put out, we attract similar minded personalities in the spirit, like attracts like. So let's just say you have someone that they start to get into some form of energy healing, maybe Reiki. I mean, there's so many different approaches to spiritual healing. They start to study it and work with it. Who do you think are, are working with them? I mean, if you were to tune in, we talk about the energy field, seeing the aura. Let's just say we were able to see the aura or even just sense it with someone doing hands on healing. They've got someone on a table, we tune into them. Their energy field, it's completely expanded. And if we were able to see their energy field, we would see the beautiful colors around them. And we would also see and sense individuals from the spirit world who would have very closely blended with that healer within their energy field. You know, and, and, and we might see, oh my gosh, it looks like there's a Native American medicine person with the healer. Or maybe there's some nun who worked in hospital hospitals for years as a, as a nurse you know that's what that, that's what her background was now with with mediumship it's teamwork i mean any kind of mediumship you have a, you have a spirit team that works with you and all of them are specialists so that's any kind of communication you know a loved one wants to come through well they've never done it before they're actually having to work through third parties in the spirit world who have attuned to the medium you know who, who understand how to bring through the communications and assist them uh, with healing mediumship just like you might go to a general practitioner for a health concern. Uh, <clears throat> similarly, you know, you, there's, there's some heal, healing guides or helpers who are there in spirit, spirit doctors who might be more like general practitioners, but there's also specialists. So based on the needs or the, the health conditions of the recipient, the spirit team is going to pool their efforts. And, and as a team, they're going to work through the individual healing medium and administer the treatment. Absolutely. Wonderful. I love the way that uh, uh, you shared, um, you know, what you did and it's sort of made complete sense. And as you spoke about it, uh, I was actually visualizing someone doing uh, Reiki on a person and uh, it's not just them, but it's their team, so to speak, uh, from the spirit world who are assisting this person uh, to heal the client or the patient or whoever it is. You know, we, we all, I mean, everyone has, we have our own aura, we have our own subtle body, and we have our own life energy. It's just like, let's say when you're little, yeah. you know, you're hurting, your mom might take you and hold you and you feel really good. You know, that's that's her life energy that's doing it. And I mean, you, you, if you're around a natural healer, I mean, they just give off this really extra abundance, super abundance of life energy. And it's great to be around them as opposed to someone who's a psychic vampire or a sponge, you know, who takes all your energy. That's a bit different because yeah. they're toxic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but with someone who's a natural healer, what they're doing is, is they're raising their vibration up and they're receiving information that is channeled through them from a higher source. So someone could work with healing. They're never going to be drained. They're going to feel so – I talked about, you know, with mediumship, you just feel high. You feel so uplifted when you're doing it. Your entire nervous system is charged. It's the same thing with healing. And it's universal. Now, I mentioned Dr. Kenny, you know, who, who worked in Bombay Hospital. And I mean, if this is something which is worldwide. But when, 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 he, when he initially got into it, he had this condition of his back. He was telling me this. And he didn't know what to do. I mean, he was going to all these different colleagues of his who were medical specialists. So he wrote to Harry Edwards just outside of London in the UK. And Harry Edwards passed over 1976. And he was one of the greatest uh, – exponents of spiritual healing worldwide he authored probably the best books on spiritual healing harry edwards now this is back in the, in the depression era he started developing trance mediumship and clairvoyance he started training with and he, he started his own um healing practice in his home and actually during the battle of britain when when, when the german um germany was bombing britain i mean his house got destroyed unfortunately but he established in 1946 it's this very large estate, which is in Surrey, Guildford, Surrey, which is just south of <clears throat> of London, of the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary, which is still around. And anyway, so Dr. Kenny had actually written to Harry Edwards and received a letter back and received absent healing. And through the healing of prayers being done at a distance, his spinal condition was completely eradicated. And that got him into psychic phenomena. 
Now that got him into developing his own spiritual gifts. And you'll see that with most people. You know, who are the best healers? Who are the best mediums? They've gone through hell themselves. You know, they've gone through personal experiences and they develop empathy for other people. We see this in indigenous cultures too. You know, the wounded healer, someone who's gone through maybe a lot of physical trauma or some type of emotional challenge. And as a result, when we have everything ripped away from us, where do we have to go? We have to go to God inside our heart, don't we? And we develop compassion for other people. And really, the, you know, you, you can study, let's say someone goes to a Reiki class. Oh, I'm going to go on a Saturday. I'm going to be a master or I'm going to learn this. Now, you can study all these different techniques or read books, learn so many different approaches. But really, so much of spiritual growth, it has to do with your life experience and what you go through in terms of your own personal development, the challenges that you face. And you can't buy this stuff. Now, everybody has this ability, but it's not something where you can, I, I call it microwavable mediumship. And in the last 20 years or so, there's all these TV shows on mediums, a lot of interest in the subject matter. And people, like I say, they want to go to like a Saturday workshop and just, oh, I'm going to be wonderful. I'm going to have these amazing powers. And it's, it's like artistic ability. You know, you can develop something, but you're always going to be developing it and taking it further. And but your spirituality has to be developed as well. So so speaking about development of spirituality, you mentioned that one needs to yes. raise their vibration in order to be able to tune into the communication that is being sent through the spirit world. So how does one go about learning to develop yes. or to raise their vibrations to be able to channel or receive these messages? Well, mediumship, it's, I mean, in terms of the, you know, the, tech, the technical process of it, I mean, it does involve raising your vibrations. So, and, and there's a lot of different ways, different approaches to pray and different approaches to meditate. I mean, I, I personally, I do, I do a lot of, um, you know, mantra meditation. I'm, I'm really into that, you know, raising my own vibration up. Uh, and definitely, any type of meditative type of process is going to help someone do that. I mean, the, the other thing is, is with, with, with mediumship, some of, some of the work that I do with teaching people involves, and I, and I guide people through this, getting the people really very, very, very relaxed in a very deep, meditative, receptive, relaxed state. So the physical body's relaxed, and what happens after we relax our physical bodies? Our minds are very receptive. and in doing so, I, I work with the person to actually raise their consciousness up, you know, to the higher chakras, and they start to disconnect from their physical body. They start to disassociate from their body and mentally kind of get out of the way and literally will feel like the upper part of their body is expanding. They'll lose awareness of, of, of the lower part of the body, and they'll find themselves kind of displaced from the physical body. Now, this is a very safe, this is a very positive thing that I'm describing. But in doing so, they're out of the way and their mind is very receptive. So when something's put in their head, put in their mind, they're going to notice it a lot more. And then what I would do with, you know, in terms of training people is, is have them verbalize it, have them articulate it. And the, the biggest block people have is the analytical mind. So let's say the spirit world, <clears throat> the, the personality is impress something in someone's head that the typical reaction is to an, you know is to analyze yep. it you, you start getting involved you pick it apart and automatically what's going to happen is you're going to block more information from com from from coming in so it, it it's really important for people in the beginning not to worry too much is this is my imagination am i just making this up you know I mean, if they see something in their head, just describe the experiences. I mean, that's one of the things I do with people who are very novice or beginner, you know, just have them verbalize. Maybe they're just feeling some temperature changes around their physical body. When you give something out and, and, and you describe it, you're letting the helpers who are training you from spirit and learning how to work with you, <clears throat> you're actually letting them know that you've actually experienced what they presented to you. And then they can they and they can build upon it. And let's say you goof up a little bit, which is okay. And, you know, you do have things, somebody gets something as a medium, they're learning, or maybe that, you know, they just, they just have pretty cruddy training. What will happen is they'll add all the stuff to it or they'll leave stuff out or maybe misinterpret something. And that's why I always tell people, test the spirit world, test the medium. Just because someone says, oh my God, 
gosh, I've got the intergalactic space brotherhood and I'm channeling them. All these things like that. I mean, like if I started acting like a dog and barking going around in a forest, would you believe me? I said, oh, I have an alligator for a guide and I started crawling on my stomach. Now, there's people who are gullible who are just completely buy in, you see. And the spirit world doesn't want us to be uh, gullible. They want us to use our intelligence. That's the big thing. So I always question this stuff. And, I mean, some might have books out. They might be on Oprah. I mean, they might be on your show, too. I mean, I don't know. And that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, someone's legitimate. You, you, you always test spirit. It, it, it's, it's really very important. And, and just realize that the more you learn about the stuff, the mechanics of it, how, how it actually works, and experience things yourself, you're going to have a better criteria to kind of evaluate these types of things. But there's a lot of stuff out there. It's just not – it's not reality. It's not really based on fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot all for sharing this is that. That's all, all, it's all factual. I mean, we really are spirit souls. You know, God really exists. There's really life after death. That stuff is all fact. But when someone starts to claim all this weird stuff and there's no, uh, no evidence for it, you know, no way of really, you know, like I said, there's a fine line between your own imagination and a genuine psychic impression. Now you're on you're 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 in Vancouver, aren't you? Right. So if you go a little bit further south, you've got California, you've got the West Coast. I, I do a lot of work in California, and I mean, there's so many people, you know, channeling all sorts of things in the kitchen sink. Now, if you were to tune into those pe people's energy fields, they're not actually connecting with spirit. A lot of uh, these people. Okay. Now that doesn't mean someone's necessarily fraudulent. I mean, you got that too. You know, oh my gosh, I, I couldn't get the job. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, acting in Hollywood. I'm here. I am in LA. You know, I don't want to wait table, so I'm going to channel. Ah, and I'm going to yeah. get. The, I'm going to. I'm going to get <laughs> the book contract with with some new age publisher, and you know, it'll be really a famous <laughs> book, and I've all this wild. And you know, that's it's hard it's to really, differentiate, right? Sometimes <laughs> you turn yeah, you turn into someone mm -hmm. like that, and they're not even working with spirit. Now, the other thing that happens is, and you know, someone gets into this, and this is this is pretty normal. And, you know, people aren't able to tell their own imagination imagination from something right. genuine yep. so you can definitely have someone who's sincere but just a bit deluded and they just don't have education behind it now with mediumship education and training are, ex are really very important they're essential i mean you have some people i knew this one guy and he was an engineer it's interesting because his wife was a born again christian but he was having psychic experiences and she sent him to one of my Workshop. I used to teach at this one college in mediumship at this one college in <clears throat> Massachusetts when I lived there. That's where I'm from originally, Massachusetts, before I lived in New Zealand. And so he came and his dad came through and he started taking some classes. But anyway, because he was for years, I mean, he had taught engineering in a college level as a professor. And he, was, he, he really didn't want to listen to any kind of advice. He just started opening up to the spirit world. And he would just walk up to people. It could be in Walmart, and he'd start giving them messages. Can you imagine that? So one of the things with mediumship is you have to learn how to close it down and how to discipline it, like when to use it and when not to. And there's some people, I mean, like this guy, I mean, he, he was a really wonderful person, but he just opened up, and he was running all over. I mean, he would go to the dentist's office. He would give everyone in the reception area a message from spirit. The receptionist. Then he'd go in the hygienist, get one, the dentist. I mean, he was there three, two or three hours. I mean, they loved him there. But it's like a leaky faucet. And see, that's the whole thing with mediumship. It's carefully planned out by spirit. I said that earlier. Orchestrated by them, facilitated by them. And the, you want the quality to be there. Now, you do have people, you know, they're, 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 they're in McDonald's, they're in Walmart, they're at the shopping mall, and they'll walk up to people. Now, if I were a dentist, which I'm not, or let's just say I, I learned online how to extract teeth, and I had pliers. I'd write a manual on dentistry. I bet I could take your teeth out. I bet I could tear them out with pliers. Would you want me to do that? No, you'd want a licensed dent dentist to do it, wouldn't you? And can you imagine if I was, a, you know, I went up to people in public and I just like grabbed their mouths, opened up. Oh, that molar in the back's got a cavity. I'm going to have to remove it. So with medium, you don't just do that, but 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 you get. Um, People who dabble in this, they might take a class or two, they, get, they read a few books, this type of thing, and then they're out like trying to do it, 
Now, everybody has this ability. It's natural. But with training for mediumship, it takes years of learning. It's, it's not just learning you know, the mechanics of it and perfecting, perfecting your connection with spirit, which is, which is an ongoing process in terms of the cultivation. It's learning the ethics, learning how to work with people the right way. And that's why proper mentorship or proper having the right types of teachers there is, is really, really, really important. Because there's, there's, there's too many people, unfortunately, out there who aren't necessarily qualified and then they're out presenting themselves. And <clears throat> we're really it, – it, it's very important with, with anything like this that we have people who really have the right type of training. Even if they're very sincere, if they're not really – at a level where they should be working, it's not a good thing. Does that make sense? Got it. No, it totally makes sense. Now, Steve, wanted to quickly ask you, what are spirit guides and does everyone have them? Yeah, everybody has guides. I mean, like attracts like. And with, you know, with mediumship, I call them helpers because they're specialists. They're specialists. You know, they work with us. They train with us as we're training. And that's a bit different than a guide. But let's say you're a nuclear physicist and you're doing some type of research. You might attract attract similar minded people in spirit who are scientists who did that type of research to work with you, maybe long term or on one type of project. Do you understand? So we, we you could be a very, very uh, unethical, sleazy politician and you will have people in the in the spirit world who might have been involved in government or politics who will be drawn to you and want to work with you. And maybe, you know, if you're unethical, they'll try to influence you so you do positive things that will help people yeah. and society in general. You know, everybody has guides. Now, do we listen to them? Now, now, some of our guides, they're there our entire life working with us. Others come and go as needed or maybe for a specific project. Right. But the spirit world, the subtle dimension, it, it's all around us. You know, we talk about raising our vibration. Yeah. Well, that's what we learn to do. We learn to open our eyes and they're around us. See, it's a different frequency. That's, it's much quicker. It's a quicker thing. Okay. It's slower, more dense. Yeah, it's a dense, very dense heavy world this material world that's so heavy here and so how do they do it they have to mentally impress us impress our minds and you know that's if we're receptive we're going to be aware of that and so they're around us and everything all the time and and you know like i say someone could not even believe in this stuff or accept it they might be an atheist those people still have guides who try to work with them and you know you could be a really wonderful from your heart person just you don't believe in god you think that mediumship is a bunch of bunk, you know, anything new age, it's just delusion. And, you know, you're just not into religion or spirituality. And, you know, you might be doing wonderful service and helping other people. And I guarantee you, you know, you tune into someone like that. There will be people from the spirit world trying to inspire that person to work with them. I mean, it's amazing. They will use anybody as an instrument if they're able to. I mean, a lot of it, though, I mean, if we have the, a motivation to genuinely want to help other people and then you know, just serve and, and, and heal, it's going to certainly help the personalities from spirit work with us. I mean, they're attracted to people like that because it's in their energy field and it goes out. It's just like in, in the evening, you know, it could be very dark outside and we, we put a light on all these little bugs go for the light. It's kind of similar. If you work on your spirituality, your energy field similarly has this brightness to it, this clarity and purity to it that attracts uh, loving personalities mm -hmm. from spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, what role do grandparents or people or ancestors, so to speak, play in our spiritual evolution? People who are in some way connected well, or related to us? Well, the, it, it, it kind of depends. I mean, obviously, if someone passes over to the spirit world, you know, we're related to yeah. them. Even if we hated the guts, I mean, you know, you, let's just say you had some uncle and you hated the guy, you know, and it's really dysfunctional. That person is still connected to you and there's some karma there there's some type of connection there uh, and that doesn't necessarily isn't really necessarily severed just because the person's kicked the bucket they've gone to the spirit world so but at the same time let's say you know your mom's in the spirit world and she's really nice lady really loving she's not necessarily that evolved yep she's not necessarily that intelligent it's not like you become instantly enlightened and there's, there's, there's some ideas sometimes that people have, oh, you know, I'm going to go to the spirit world. I'm just going to merge into this bright white light. Everyone is one. But no, we're, we're, we're simultaneously one and simultaneously different. We have a eternal uh, spiritual nature. It, it's not like you 
lose your individuality or cease to exist. Uh, so with, 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 with all of this communication, you know, your loved ones, if they're not that, that evolved, they can certainly send you love and support, but they might not really be in a position of wisdom or being able to provide sound spiritual guidance. That's why we have higher guardians or higher teachers that work with us. Does that make sense? It, it, it totally does. And uh, my follow-up question is, many of our listeners, in fact, many have uh, recently stumbled across this new way of living and have discovered see, these fascinating topics like yoga, you know, mediumship, spirituality. Uh, yeah. Uh, how does a person go about connecting with his or her spirit guide in some way or well, another, even if it's a small I, way? <laughs> I, think, I think the big thing is, I mean, it, it helps to read a lot, a lot of books about it. And, and listen to a lot of podcasts like this, you know, <laughs> you know, learn a lot about it, learn how it works, you know, hear different opinions and everything about it and, and, and be skeptical about it. You know, like I say, test spirit, test the medium. All of this stuff is natural. Now, how do you how do you experience psychic abilities yourself? You know, it's learning how to meditate, learning to quiet the mind, learning how to raise your own vibration up. And there's a lot of different. I mean, let's say someone is Roman Catholic. They have their their prayer beads, you know, their mala and they pray and they. They do the rosary every day. That's going to put them into an altered state. They're going to feel the presence of God when they do that, if they're really doing it with love and devotion from their heart. And, and that's the whole thing. It's we, 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 If we change our we, – we cultivate our, spir- our, our spiritual character, our morals, you know, working on ourselves, yes. how we treat the people, that purifies our consciousness. It's like our heart so oftentimes has so much – dirt in it so many unwanted things and you know the yogic process any kind of meditative process it has to do with in sanskrit they're called anartas right cleaning out things that are unwanted things that are detrimental to our spiritual growth and all of these things some cases people aren't even aware that they're there and then they start to do self-help types of processes they start to study reiki or receive reiki or just different approaches it helps you to get rid of the things that make us less in touch with who we are that, that that contribute to us not being kind to other people you understand you know like why are we here who are we we you know we're not our physical bodies you know then there's like higher a higher purpose you know to love god to serve god to elevate ourselves and so all of these types of things if we start to work on ourselves spiritually a byproduct of that is the mediumistic types of abilities are are, are, are going to start to open up naturally mm. the psychic abilities You know, in Sanskrit, they're called cities, aren't they? Now, the thing is, someone can open up, oh, I'm going to be clairvoyant. You know, they might go to a class for clairvoyance. But just developing a mystic power or clairvoyance within itself, unless you really work on yourself, there's a bit of a limitation to it. I mean, having psychic powers within themselves does not make someone a spiritual person. I mean, they're really good things. And you can use them in so many ways to help other people. And like I say, you know, sometimes a reading or, or communication from spirit, it helps the person in the spirit world more than it does the person here. You know, someone's in the spirit world, let's say your grandmother, she may be less involved than you and the session's really for her, even though she's the one coming through. You know, just because they're over there doesn't make them some type of enlightened soul. You know, they're, they're, they're in the process of learning and growing. Makes total sense. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that with us, uh, Steve. I'm sure our listeners are uh, taking notes and uh, about to take action probably after this episode. Action Tribe, to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 forward slash 218. That's my 7 forward slash 218. And before moving on, a word from our sponsor, Gaia.com. Explore the vast traditions of yoga with the Gaia original series, Yogic Paths. Filmed across India, the 13-episode series captures the beauty of mystical Indian landscapes and never-before-seen ashrams while taking the viewer on a journey through the many traditions of yoga. While the practice of physical postures called asanas is most well-known in the West, understanding the full scope of this rich and varied tradition gives meaning and power to the yoga that we know today. Action Tribe, since you're listening to this show, it's clear that you are interested in topics such as chakras, yoga, and self-realization, and you know exactly where to go for audio content and interviews. 
And I sure hope you feel this way about our show, My 7 Chakras. But where do you go if you want a streaming TV video service with the same values and similar content? The answer is Gaia.com. To start watching this show, The Yogic Paths, as well as get your first month at Gaia for just 99 cents, visit Gaia.com forward slash My 7 Chakras. That's G-A-I-A dot com forward slash My S-E-V-E-N-C-H-A-K-R-A-S. Being challenged in life is inevitable. Being defeated is optional. Now, this is an amazing quote by Roger Crawford. Action Tribe, being defeated is a choice and it's all up to you. If you're listening to this podcast, then I'm sure that you have some challenge in your life. And challenges like we're learning today come in all shapes and sizes, health, financial, spiritual, or maybe even relationship challenges. But remember, you never know how close you are to seeing a massive breakthrough. There is a powerful force in taking small actions on a regular basis. The key is to show up again and again and again. And that's what differentiates a regular person from a spiritual warrior because you're listening to this episode right now. You have taken action and I know that you are a warrior. And as we're learning, challenges will come into your life. But accepting defeat is totally up to you because the goal is to experience that complete transformation, not just to develop one skill or just mediumship, but to experience that complete transformation. That's when you can change uh, people around you. So Stephen, talk to us about a phase in your life when you had to go through a major life challenge. What was the situation like and then how did you get out of it? Oh gosh, I've I've been through so many different uh, hellish situations in my life. And I I was saying that earlier, you know, in terms of if you want to be a... a, uh, good medium, you have to go through different types of uh, situations, don't you? Uh, let's, so let, let me just see. Okay. <clears throat> when I was uh, much younger, uh, my younger brother committed suicide, and I saw him take his own life, and I saw him actually leave his physical body. So without going into all the, the details what actually happened, uh, having that type of experience was very much a great shock to me when it took place, and although I I was already very open to the spirit world. It really forced me or encouraged me to go more within myself, which as a result, I got more in touch with God and also got more in touch with you know, my own connections with the spirit world. So I can think of a lot of different uh, experiences that were very traumatic like that that have happened in my own physical plane life. And all of those types of experiences in my perspective are take place in a person's life as a challenge to actually help them and encourage them to really connect more to the source of power. Just like I said, if you really want to work with people who have really are devastated by the loss of people close to them, you kind of have to go through the stuff yourself, unfortunately. Does that make sense? Because you you can, you can, you can, Now, something in theory, but it's not the same as hands-on experience. I mean, you, and, 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 and really, you, you read about or hear about sometimes in, in, in the media about someone just suffering, like some horrible tragedy, maybe so many people close to them passing over. And, it's, and no matter how bad a situation you go through, you know, you can always, there's always going to be situations that are even more hellish for other people too. But these situations you go through, they force you to really get in touch with more of who you are, and it really gives you strength. I mean, obviously, it's how we choose to respond to a situation, but if we look back with some of the most challenging times, we've ultimately become better people as a result of them. It, it's like, let's say someone has, has, has an addiction. Who, you know, We go to some 12-step program. Who are the people who really can help other people going into it? They're people who've already been through that type of program, who've gone through the addiction. And, and you know, someone could learn all these you know, uh, psychological approaches, but they, they're not going to have a clue compared to someone who's, who's actually experienced it. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that with us, Steve. Um, and actually going back into the past, even though that experience uh, you know, was very challenging for you. Um, so thanks a lot for sharing that f- with our listeners. In just one sentence, what is that one major life lesson that you'd like to share with our listeners? Well, the biggest, the biggest lesson is is learning to love God and and to serve God and that we're all eternal spirit souls and that the more that we connect 
with who we are, we're going to be happier, we're going to be healthier, and, we're, and things are going to be more harmonious. And when I mean healthier, not necessarily physically healthier, but we're going to be on a spiritual type of level, much healthier. Got it. You you mentioned that when you were younger, your younger brother committed suicide. That experience must have been so challenging and shocking and traumatic for you. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really traumatic, that type of experience and everything. It's really, 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 really bad. You know, mm-hmm. and, and it, it, it's, it kind of wakes you up. I mean, that's just the whole thing. I mean, things like that happen. And I mean, I know, mo- I mean, just in a general sense, I'd say most mediums I, I know, they've gone through pretty rough things like that. Maybe even worse. I mean, I don't know if you can pick, can compare things because it's there's always something that can be more traumatic. But it's it's really enabled them to have, have greater capacity just to be there for other people. Absolutely. And through this, you've inspired us to go deeper into ourselves as well and get in touch with with God. And like you mentioned, the more we connect with who we are, we will become healthier and not just physically healthy, but just mentally and and spiritually healthy as well. Yeah, I mean, real health. Real health. I mean, the body's going to fall apart anyway. I mean, it's you know, healing is not about necessarily a physical cure. It, it's about getting. Us, it's a blessing from God. It's about getting us in touch with who we are, and that's just the whole thing. That the, the more that we're in touch, the challenges aren't necessarily going to go away. But how do we respond to those situations? And are we able to really respond lovingly to others around us? That's the big thing. And if we open ourselves up, those <clears throat> higher personalities. They're going to use us as an instrument. I mean, one of my favorite prayers is the prayer of St. Francis, which really has to do with surrender. It's about opening up to God and just allowing yourself to be used as an instrument to help others. And that's really what it is as we give out. It, it, those in the, for example, you might have a, a guides in the spirit world. The service that they are doing to help people here in terms of spiritual yeah. growth actually helps them at the same time to make progress. Yeah you know, go up to the higher type of level, so to speak. And really, you know, someone's on a higher level in the spirit world. They're motivated out of love to work with people here because it's a very de- – this world is very dense. It's very slow. It's not our original home. I mean, this is like a motel. It's a motel, right? Yeah. You know, people go to the motel, you, 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 you're, you, you wouldn't stay there forever, would you? You no. might stay there for a week or two days, three days, however long, one day, but then you have to leave. So we're in these physical bodies, and eventually we're going to have to vacate the bodies. But people are so attached to their physical bodies. They identify with them. They think, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm female, I'm male, I'm an American, I'm Indian, I'm Canadian, all of this stuff. But that's all temporary. So interesting. So we're, we, we're, we're eternal. And in the spirit world, there's communities there. You know, there's, there's actually – it, there's, there's personality, there's individuality. They interact with each other. In my father's house are many mansions. There's all – these different levels there so if we work on ourselves spiritually here and i mean really overcome our faults you know in all the religions all all the different spiritual paths i mean they they they're different paths for different people and different levels you know different of understanding but they emphasize the essential things about you know love, love thy neighbor as thyself treat others the way you want to be treated you know develop you know your spirituality your devotion to god overcome you know bad bad qualities you know just the basic buddhist tenets or the basic uh, precepts you find in christianity any any bona fide religion they pretty much say the same thing don't they you know the externals are can be a bit different but the essential ideas are there and, and you, you you work on these things it will take you up to a higher type of level doesn't matter you know what you're wearing uh the external part that type of thing what your belief system is it's who you are and what you've actually done. So when the spirit world comes through, let's say you have a, a grandfather who really messed up. He's made all these mistakes. He's going to try to encourage you when he comes through. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're dealing with the same situations, not to fall into the same pattern as him in terms of your behavior or how you're thinking about things. So we can really learn a lot from the people who are in the spirit world. Got it. Well, thanks a lot for sharing Action Tribe. Let's take a few moments to pause and really digest what we've learned so far. We still have the last portion of our show, the Wisdom Round coming up, but just for a few moments, I want to, I want you to think of yourself uh, holistically, not just your physical body and mind. Uh, I mean, your entire energetic body, your entire aura and your higher self radiating beautiful energy. 
as you absorb the inspiring and fascinating ideas from today's episode in a mystical way everyone listening to this episode right now is on the same frequency so whether you're listening in from california or new york or vancouver or india or england all our energies are tuned into the same wonderful frequency and as we vibrate to be able to create whatever we desire to be able to attract whatever we desire whether it's spiritual mentors or something else i encourage you to think of yourself more as this energetic multidimensional being rather than just the physical human being that you are now because greatness is within you that's what we're learning today and just as don miguel ruiz once said what you are is a force a force that makes it possible for your body to live a force that makes it possible for your whole mind to dream because you are life so steve as on today what is your life's calling oh well my my life calling is <clears throat> is to serve god and to help other people and you know i guess the focus really is on the healing and the mediumship i travel all over the world i'm based in new zealand which is 10000 miles away from the east coast states you know 7000 miles away from where you are 8000 miles from where you are but i go all over the place and i've i've got my book best seller book you know mediumship mastery you know so the ultimate guide you know the, the mechanics of receiving spirit communication so if you're interested if anyone's interested in mediumistic growth how it works the process that's something which is available on amazon and i teach all over the world i, I do one on one mentoring which i work on you know skype or that type of thing at a distance i also run a lot of programs for training with this but i would say my main emphasis is on the healing aspect of it and the transformational aspect of it too because like i say healing is about getting in touch with who we are so even if someone has a physical condition you know like cancer or disease or something terminal how do they respond to that situation you know how do they work through how does that sit that trauma uh stimulate them to a higher type of level of realization and everything and that's what's the most important thing and, you know we we can acquire a lot of material assets and wealth but the real goal is the spirituality that we cultivate that we take with us because that's something that's going to go with us once we once we do pass over everything materially you know that stuff just stays here mhm and steve with that we arrived at the last round for today This round is called the wisdom round which contains four questions uh which is sort of like an action packed uh rapid fire round um uh so the first question is what is the best piece of advice that someone has ever given you I think the best piece of advice I ever got uh ever received was in terms of my spiritual growth is <clears throat> to receive it through quality and association of people who are more realized than myself spiritually and get whatever type of suggestions that they would have that I should do in terms of my own spiritual growth you know like what type of service should I, I do or what type of advice would they have and and because the spirituality it's really our own growth so much of it has to do with the association that we receive from others positive or negative so if we we if we're around people of a high higher vibration than ourselves they're going to bring us up it's going it's going to uh, benefit us it's going to affect us you know one moment with someone who's really god realized and spiritual it will literally transform your life i mean it could just be one or two minutes with them and name a personal habit that keeps you strong well i do a lot of uh mantra meditation every day and it's kind of, it's it's something that i do every day and it really is something which cleans my heart and it's like brushing your teeth if you don't brush your teeth you're going to notice if they're dirty you're going to yeah. be very aware right away it's the same with meditation if you if you don't do it like you want to be doing it you're really going to notice it and i i i personally would recommend that as a habit for anyone listening to this regardless of the religious tradition you know the more you can get into some type of uh prayer and meditation on a daily basis it's just as important as brushing your teeth actually a lot more speaking of brushing your teeth what is your morning routine like what do you do during the first 2 hours of your day well i like to get up i like to do my yoga i like to do you know my meditation and everything cuz that's really the best time to do it sometimes my schedule doesn't allow it and everything but uh i try to do a lot of my spiritual stuff in the morning as well when i get up this type of thing and obviously you know i, I want to you know brush my teeth and all these things as well take a shower and <laughs> 
take care of myself that way. Got it. Uh, so name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners. Well, I'll, I'll recommend my I'll recommend my own book. I might as well plug that. You know, Med- Med- Mediumship Mastery, and that that's been out now for it just came out the last two years ago, and it's on Amazon worldwide, and it's Mediumship Mastery: The Mechanics of Receiving Spirit Communications, The Ultimate Guide, and that gets into all aspects of mediumship. It's as a book, it's a appropriate for people who are novice as well as people who are very experienced and it's being used by teachers of mediumship worldwide it's got 84 easy to follow practical exercises for developing it individually as well as with groups and that gets into healing all the stuff we've talked about and more but if someone really wants to understand how it works it's not a book about me it's not one of these books that has a lot of stories about people coming for readings it's on a much deeper type of level in terms of actually, it, it, it's something which long after I'm no longer here physically, it will be probably be used by people for developing mediums. So Action Tribe, I know how much you love our book recommendations. And I know that many of you get these books as soon as you hear them shared on our show. That's why Audible.com is offering Action Tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out their service. Now, in case you don't know, Audible has over 180,000 titles to choose from for a wide range of devices like iPhone, Android, or Kindle, including bestsellers like The Chakra System by Anadia Judith, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda, and A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. To download your free audiobook today and start listening, go to my 7 forward slash free book. Once again, that's my 7 forward slash free book and get your download. So, Stephen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for sharing so much of Uh, useful and abundant information about mediumship. Uh, Before you go, tell us something that you're grateful for and tell us how we can find you online. Oh, I'm I'm just really grateful to be here physically. I'm I'm really grateful to be on your show and I'm grateful to be able to share with others. And every time that I open from my heart, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to see the love in others and to be able to really touch in with them because life is such a blessing. And I really, really appreciate your show so much. I really can feel your energy. I feel your heart. I can, where you're coming from is such a wonderful place. And I know that you, I know you told me a lot of people listen to your, your programs, but I know that you, you, you have no idea because when you touch them, how much in turn they're going to touch other people. Thanks a lot. (laughs) And it's really, it's really a great blessing to be here. You know, in terms of getting hold of me, My website is stevehermanmedium.com, stevehermanmedium.com. And I mean, if you do a search for me, Steve Herman Medium, I mean, that would come up as well. But like I say, I, I do uh, a lot of teaching. I do private sessions, you know, in person as well as at a distance. And I, I have my book. I do a lot of training programs. And anyone interested in this type of work or healing, please get hold of me. I'm, I'm really into sharing. I'm really into the teaching aspect. And I certainly will go out my way to help anyone perfect we'll have the link up in the show notes Stephen. thank you so much for joining us on today's show talking to us about spirits and mediumship and so much more and taking us one step closer to a human revolution yeah thank you very much and god bless you you are listening to my seven chakras go to my s-e-v-e-n chakras.com download your free gift Get inspired and take action. Transform your life today.